Offensively, a lot of our KPIs weren't met this year. Um, there was probably the, this is one of the big RFI areas for us. Um, some has got to do with just kicking, composure, uh, general skills. Um, here's a really good example here of just when we got some good kicking and composure uh, in the Melbourne game this particular year. And we get a nice easy shot on goal, uh, which is something we've been looking to always do. Uh, actually, one area that we're going really well in this season is just our uh, lowering our eyes in that, like that example there in the marks inside 50, as you can see, we're AFL 5 and AFL 1, depending on which part of the launch zone you go. But it's when we go that long ball inside 50, as you can see, we're, we're quite red in that part of the ground and one of the worst teams in the competition when we have to kick long to the goal face. And once again, that leads back to that contested ball one. Uh, and you can see the numbers there, our win percentage. Uh, AFL 18 at 14%, so a really big gap there and our, our lack of keys this particular year probably sums up this number, so it's a real uh, area to work on. Whilst it's an area to work on, it's also the f a lack of personnel that we've had in that part of the game and leads back to that post-clearance number again like we spoke about before. And here's a bit of an example when we do it well. Jonathan Freeman against when he came back for us midway of the year and he gets on the end of a really good contested mark from Rocky. Just the back half turnovers, a big part of uh, your offence uh, affects your defence as well. And one thing we're AFL 17 at is giving the ball back to the opposition to score. So what that basically means is if we're going down this little part of the ground right here, it basically means you get the ball, you kick it out of your defensive 50 uh, and give it straight back to the opposition and they bring it back for a score. And as you can see by the numbers here, one in three of those approximately come back for a score. It's actually the highest score source in the competition when you turn the ball over in this part of the ground. And as you can see, it's a, a really high number, that 131. Um, so obviously your offence can kill your defence uh, as well and make it really difficult for you to defend that ball when you turn the ball over so close to goal. The positive is only one error less per season and we'll hit AFL average in this area. So uh, what, as I said, nothing's ever as good as it seems, nothing ever is bad as it, as it seems. And here's an example of just turning the ball over, back half of the ground opposition, go back the other way to score. One thing that really improved uh, in our game is our ability to play on. Um, it's obviously something you can't keep calm and do, but when we took the game on, we were much better. We averaged we were AFL 11, 33% for the season, but when you do the breakdown, our first half of the season were AFL 18, and then we really had a focus on it in the back half. And whilst we did make some errors, um, the back half were AFL 3, in particular the last five rounds um, were AFL 2 and three times in the last five rounds we kicked 100 points or more so uh, we think we've found a bit of a mechanism for our young boys to, uh, to play well. Defensively our numbers um, weren't great um, but as you can see both offensively and defensively from turnover there's some work to do. Uh, we've broken these numbers down into fast play and slow play and we've found that our, most of our issues come from when we turn the ball over in fast play that make it for us really hard to defend. Uh, one thing we know about defence is the ball pressure, the tackling component, the smothering component, uh, the really important parts of our game. And this is one that we'll always focus on. Uh, really good work from Christensen there. Uh, and just the ability to tie up a player and, and grab that arm. Um, just little missed tackles like these, get the ball out. Uh, there's a potentially a stoppage that gets out as well. So we'll always work on those things. But the team element is always the, uh, what we do in, the, in slowing the opposition down or whether they can transition fast against us. And it's really four seconds is all it takes. Okay? And there's a really good example where Ryan Lester delays Jack Stephen enough that gives Ryan Harwood behind the ball enough cues to come forward and kill that ball. Whereas in this example here, Joshy Green kicks a fast point and then we've made the ground really long defensively and the opposition are able to really kick through us back the other way because we haven't got time to set up defensively quick enough and they just weave through us. Another contest loss here as well but this results in a score for the opposition. And once we slow the opposition down you'll see things like this. Harris Andrews was very good at this all year, been able to come forward read the cues and cut the ball off. But this can't happen unless the good work's done downfield to slow the opposition up. Marco Paparone here reading the cues, coming forward and effect a contest. And then Daniel Rich here swivels his head really well, comes forward, but then the technique of being able to spoil and take the body is the next part. So the swivel the head and identification's one, and then the skill component is the other part that we have to make sure we get right. 
And lastly, we'll talk about our momentum, which is a really important part for us in our leadership and our growth of our group. This graph basically shows the amount of times the opposition scored three or more goals against us in a row. And as you can see, we're AFL 18 in this particular stat. Uh, only 21 times the best team in the competition, Fremantle, had three goals scored in a row against them. We had 54, which is quite a big number. So we can uh, love to call a timeout as a coach sometimes, but it's really important that we can gather our mom uh, change the momentum on the football field. And it's something we'll be working on hard in the pre-season with our planning. And while we have optimism going forward, I think this is the most important part you need to know uh, as fans. We won 10 first quarters, uh, we beat a top 8 team in the last game of the season, um, and not only that, we beat the team that just finished outside the 8 in Port Adelaide. Uh, we've had more than double the amount of AFL average for injuries, and whilst that's not optimistic, it means the amount of players and stability you bring back into our group next season will be really important for us. Uh, and just the natural improvement again of our young group, Dan McStay, another year older, Louis Taylor, Harris Andrews, Liam Dawson, so on and so forth. And it might seem a lot, but to get to the top eight, we need 800 points. That's six goals per game. That's 133 more contests that we either stop or we score ourselves. And that's only one contest per player per month. So when you break it down, it's only a small thing. And while we have optimism is also how we finished off our time at the Gabba in round 23. McStay is at home, Green, he runs into an open goal and this is what the Gabba used to sound like. And they can go in to the off season with a win and some confidence knowing that, well, they can compete. And last of all, we'd like to thank you for your support as members. Uh, it's been quite a difficult year uh, for you, for us and for our players. Um, we're overly excited about the direction in which our football club is going and we hopefully you all get on board next season and, and fill out your memberships because we've got a feeling 2016 is going to be an exciting one for our group. Thank you again.